Hey guys, my name's Jesse Laval. Welcome to Photon Photography NJ. In today's video we're going to be talking about what it's like to edit Canon R6 footage with the new MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop. Now I've got 16 gigs of RAM, a 1 terabyte SSD drive, I've got the 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, and that's the variant that I ended up ordering and I'm super super happy with it. Of course I wish I had more RAM but these MacBooks are seriously expensive. I couldn't justify going any further with the price. So I ended up landing again with 16 gigs of RAM. Being a Windows user and using Premiere Pro, I regularly use over 20 gigs of RAM when I'm on Windows. And I haven't really had any problems with the 16 gig variant so far. There was one instance where I was doing a graphic design where I put in a whole bunch of PNG files and when it was loading all of the PNG files into that graphic layout and then when I rendered that it definitely hit that limit with the RAM and I was using over 16 gigs of RAM so it was then writing you know a page file onto the hard drive and it brought the entire system to a creeping halt and it was really slow to render at that point but that was really the only time that I hit that wall with regular editing and being able to just basically go ahead and scrub render any type of like 4k footage that's coming out of my R6, it's absolutely phenomenal. The screen Apple calls XDR, that's essentially Apple's fancy name for HDR. So this is an HDR screen, and you can definitely tell. The colors are really beautiful, and the blacks are super, super dark and vivid. I do notice much better color coming out of the MacBook Pro screen than even, say, like my Samsung 4K monitor that I've been working on for years now. XDR, HDR, whatever you want to call it, it definitely looks nice, it's beautiful, and I do feel like I'm getting a much more accurate color range out of my projects now than I was on my Samsung monitor that you see behind me here. So the screen, very, very happy with it. Next, I wanna talk about the ports on this laptop. Now it's gonna give you three USB-C ports, the MagSafe charger, you're also gonna find that you have the HDMI output, that's really awesome to have, and it has an SD card reader, as well as having an auxiliary plug-in for your headphones. So basically, all of the basics that you're gonna need, you know, sound, inputting your card, being able to output to some type of monitor or a television. It's all right there in the laptop. Basically, I'm just really, really happy with the overall build aesthetics of the entire laptop. It's really functional. It has everything there that I'm going to need for doing any of my projects. So it's just been, you know, a home run as far as just ergonomics and build. Another huge plus to being able to edit with the Mac OS is the fact that it allows me to mirror or extend my monitor out to my iPad. So I'm able to connect my iPad and have it just mirror out or extend out and give me a whole entire another screen. Now the iPad has another beautiful screen on it so it's really nice to be able to use that. I tried to do it wirelessly and I'm just gonna say it's absolute junk. It literally just crashes every time I try to do anything in Premiere Pro when I have it connected wirelessly. Now that being said, when I plug it in, it's perfect. So I just use it plugged in from now on and I'm really, really happy to be able to use that as an external monitor. The keyboard is something that's worth noting when you're talking about a laptop. It's basically like every other laptop keyboard that I've used. You know, I saw all the reviewers like talking about how amazing this keyboard is and somebody like me who's used to a desktop and I've been using a full-on mechanical keyboard, it's nothing that impressive. I mean, it's a nice keyboard for a laptop, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing to really write home about either. Overall, I like it. What I really wanted out of this was the ability to edit my 4K, 422, H.265 files that come out of the Canon R6. And that's regular IPB compression because I forget which firmware it was. I think it was firmware 1.3 where they first introduced the new IPB light compression. And thank you, Canon. I'm really glad that they added that because with my desktop, I could not edit the regular IPB compression files. It just could not do it. I had to generate proxies. And let me just say, I absolutely hate proxies so much. I'll spend thousands of dollars to avoid using them, which is what I've done getting this laptop, and it was a success. I'm able to now just scrub right through the full-on IPB compression files, no problem at all with this laptop, and that's something that my desktop with an 8700K processor was not able to do. That was the basic reason for me to upgrade to this laptop, was one, to have something that was powerful and mobile, that's a check mark, but also something that was going to be powerful enough to be able to scrub through, again, the H.265 highly compressed files that 
come out of the R6. Because ultimately, I don't want to spend a bunch of money on an expensive camera and not be able to utilize the absolute best quality footage that it can make. So now that I can do that without even a hitch, that's awesome. Using Premiere Pro on the laptop is just a much better experience because there's just no hitchiness at all. Everything is 100% smooth 100% of the time. If you're looking for something that's going to edit your R6 footage, go ahead and pick up that MacBook because you're definitely going to be happy with it. Now, I picked up the one terabyte hard drive because I didn't really want to worry about space. Originally, I ordered the 500 gigabyte version, and I ended up canceling that and getting the one terabyte version just because, you know, you can't upgrade these things later. So I got the larger drive. That being said, you are able to use the Samsung T7 SSDs, and they're external, and they're super, super fast. They're going to give you a thousand megabytes up and down, so read and write speeds of over a thousand megabytes a second, and you do get that connecting to the USB-C ports and the MacBook Pro. They're super small, super fast. You can edit all of that 4K footage right on those hard drives, no problem at all in Premiere Pro. It allows you to just basically load all of your really big 4K files that you're going to get off your camera onto external drives and you're not going to gum up the actual hard drive inside of your computer. So Samsung T7 SSD drives, definitely take a look at them. They work great. So overall guys, you know, it's really just kind of the complete editing package if you ask me. If I had to say if you have an unlimited budget, definitely bump your RAM up to 32 gigs of RAM. If not, I think you'll probably be decently happy with 16 gigs of RAM, although you'll have to understand that there will be certain tasks where you will be able to surpass the need of 16 gigs of RAM. You've got to be willing to deal with that. Again, for me, I think it's going to be totally fine. I'm going to stick with the 16 gig variant because I'm just happy with it. I've been so impressed by the M1 Pro chip. It's just absolutely insane. Like, it just outperforms my 8700K without even sweating. Like, it doesn't even heat up. Again, the only time that I really saw the system get warm was when I was surpassing that RAM limit. And for some reason, it made the chip just, like, heat up pretty good. Note there, I didn't even hear the fans kick on when it was doing that. The laptop's been absolutely silent the entire time that I've been using it. Okay guys, if you think this video helped you in any way, think about going below, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next video.